We're going to talk today about how to mount the glass on the sample plate. And I thought we'd do this manually, really, because I realized the sound of the machine yesterday really blocked out my voice. So I think the best way to do this is when we're working with the machine, we'll manually walk through how to do the process we're going to do and then the next video will be just simply watching the machine do that process. Um, okay, so remember we pre-marked our glass with a permanent marker and I used to let the students have a bit of fun with this and um, you could draw anything you wanted on the surface of that glass because um, it, what we want to see is those markings ground away, ground away. So you can get quite artistic if you want. So we're gonna turn the camera and we're gonna have a look at the sample plate holder. And you can just make out, here we've got our slot, which I've pre-wiped with a blue towel. And you want to get these slots as clean and free of dirt and dust as possible because the only thing that is fixing our glass is oil to the sample plate. So this has to be extremely clean. Now you're gonna take your oil and you're going to wash down that plate after you've wiped it with oil. Just kind of start from the top and squeeze out Put your glass with the, the face that you marked facing out and you push your glass up and down in that slot to push out any air bubbles. Now, on top of this sample head are numbers and I always start my, my sample sets at number one, number one. That means as you go through your set of six, you'll end up really on this head at 20. But what it's telling you is the running order of your, in this case, our small slides, the six slides. When you go to grinding your samples, you'll do the same. And that means that the glass that was run in sample slot one is matched to the sample that was run in sample slot one. And there's, there's discussion that what you're doing is matching up the two surfaces that were ground in that slot to get the best result. And it does work. I do really think it does work. Right. I'm going to try to remind you remember we have the manual feeding wheel. Now, to move our wheel in on the samples, we're going to turn it to the left, to the left. So, I'm going to bring the camera back here, and we're going to turn that wheel into the left, and you can watch it progress. To take the wheel out, you move it to the right and you'll see the distance increasing again. And what you want to do is to move that wheel head as close to the top of what you're grinding without hitting it. Because that cuts down on the machine having to move that wheel in by whatever uh, um, measurement you've told it to do. In this case, we're moving it forward by one duck or five micron. So moving it to the top of the sample cuts down on the machine having to do that itself. Okay, we'll move you back. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to load all the glasses onto the machine. And then the next video you'll see is me turning the machine on and flipping over our nodding duck on the ratcheted wheel 
and let the grinding process begin. And then I'll turn the video off and I'll turn it back on when it's time to stop the grind. And I'm going to leave the alarm on so that you can hear that because that's going to tell us when that grind is completed. So let's see how we go.